Hi, this is Jody from mcpactions.com. I've had a number of requests lately to show how I work. And so I'm going to do a few video tutorials uh, coming up called Watch Me Work. And this is the first of them. What I'm going to do is actually show you my editing process from beginning to end. Keep in mind, I obviously use mostly my actions, but we'll throw in some other tips and things as well. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is show you some pictures. And the two we're going to be working on today are this photo right here. And we're going to go ahead and work on this photo right here. So let's go ahead and start. I'm going to minimize this one so we can work on this first one with the girl in front of the door. This particular photo, when I look at it, the first thing I'm thinking is how I would really like some intense color out of the rust and out of the blue. And the best way to get that type of color is using my complete workflow actions, the color burst, I'm sorry, the color explosion action. That's what I'm going to go ahead and use here. So I'm going to go ahead and click play. And it's going to ask me for a levels adjustment, but my levels were fine. And then it's going to actually stop and I'm going to be painting on the intense color. And then I'm going to click continue once I've done that. I'm going to be painting with white and I'm going to be painting with an opacity of 100%. So you'll see as soon as I do this, some amazing blue colors come out and some amazing rust colors come out. And I'm using a very soft edge airbrush right now. And once I get closer to the subject, to the girl in this case, I'm going to want to go ahead and switch to a slightly harder brush. So I take my soft edge airbrush and I'm going to increase the hardness of this brush that I'm already using so I can get closer to her hairline, closer to her skin without actually touching it. If I do touch it, I'll show you what happens. She'll turn kind of red and get a little red dot. I just click the X on my keyboard so I then have black in my foreground to clean it up. Then I click X again to keep painting. So then I saw I clicked her knee, X. So you just keep swapping the colors as you paint using the layer mask. And while I'm painting, I'll tell you to go visit my tutorials on layer masks. If you're not familiar with these, they are on my blog and you can just do a search in the top search box. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up here as quickly as I can so you don't get bored watching me paint. It usually takes me about a minute to really paint in um, using this action. And this is the only part you have to be super detail oriented about with this action, but it is very important that you are. Okay, once I'm done with that, I click play to resume the action as it told me to do. And then I click continue and a dialog box comes up for sharpening. And I wanna look at her eyes and her face. And actually the default is perfect for this, but I'm just looking for it to look like an Etch-a-Sketch drawing. Then I click continue. And now it lets me know that if I want, I can run Oops, I Blew It or Peekaboo, which this particular image doesn't really need those. The All the layers in this are adjustable. For this particular image, I'm gonna actually decrease the opacity of the color explosion layer to make it more intense and dark. And I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. Now, the only other thing I might do with this particular one is use Touch of Light, Touch of Darkness, which is a free action on my blog. And I'm going to go ahead and click Play. And you will see now that it's got two layers here, Touch of Light and Touch of Darkness. If I want to brighten up her skin a bit, I would select White and bring the opacity down to about 15, 20%. So we'll go with 19 here. I'm just going to tap on her face once, come in here, maybe tap on her neck, make it a little bit smaller and tap on her arms. And her legs already look a little lighter than the rest of her, so that's probably I wouldn't hit those too much. Then for touch of darkness, if I want to intensify this effect even more on the background, I can actually increase the opacity to between 20 and 30%. And actually just rub on the background and it's going to make it a little bit darker which is going to actually make these colors actually pop even more because they're so intense already which is nice and if I want to then add a little bit of more of a vignette effect I can come in here again and do that one more time I tend to like my backgrounds not as vignetted as much as I like them um, just deeper so I'm going to go pretty close to her and actually intensify the effect kind of all over and then maybe one more time a little bit around the edges if you see any halos, just go in real close and kind of cover those up. Okay, that's pretty much it for this photo. This was our before, and I had cropped it before you guys got here, but um, and this is our after, so you can see how amazingly intense this has gotten. 
Okay, one more photo real quick. Let's go ahead to this photo of this little boy. And actually before cropping it, it looked like that. I cropped in since I wasn't really fond, as you can see, of the shoes right here. Um, so I decided to crop in closer. And so this is my crop. And now from this point, I'm gonna go ahead and run Color Burst, which is another action from my same set, the Complete Workflow. This action is great uh, for bringing out color that you don't want super, super intense. And I do see a little bit of a color cast in these whites, so I'm gonna show you what to do with that at the end. That was a levels dialog, but my exposure was perfect, so I didn't need to adjust that, but I could have. And you'll see you can stop here to paint on color, or we can continue and do it at the end. I usually do my, this at the end, whereas the color explosion you can't do at the end, but I prefer do it at the end if I can. That one for a few reasons you can't though. So I look at the eyes here, and this I'm gonna actually increase the sharpening so that it looks like an Etch-a-Sketch. And then it will say I can run Oops, I Blew It or Peekaboo if I want. The exposure was pretty much right on with this, so I probably wouldn't run either one on this particular image either. But those are included in the set as well. Now Paint on Pop is a great layer. I'm going to go ahead with it and actually paint on the hair. And again, right now I've got my brush at 27%, but if I went up to 100%, you'll see it'll get super red. It's going to really bring that color out, which is fine, actually, because, and I'm using my X key to paint it off his ears. Um, I could paint it probably on this teddy bear a little bit too to kind of intensify the effect on the teddy bear, but I'm not going to paint it on the clothes. Now once I'm done painting, I'm going to decrease the opacity or fill, doesn't really matter which, down over here to taste. And you can see we can make his hair really look like the bright redhead he is. And we've got a few other layers we can go and adjust, and I'll come in here, I might actually increase the contrast a little bit there. Um, Magic Boost helps really brighten up the skin tones. It also brightens up backgrounds. So if you want your background darker, when you've got Magic Boost up, just take your brush and turn it black. And you can actually, you might even decrease the opacity of that a little bit, but come in here. And again, when you get real close to the face, you might need to make your brush a little bit smaller. And we can literally deepen this up. And almost done here. Okay, just so that way your eyes don't totally go to the background. That works perfect. If you want to add more of a vignette, you're welcome to. I think for this photo, I'd actually like to just keep it. It's looking pretty good to me. So I might want to brighten up the shadows in his neckline. Or for this one, I might even run the eye action. We could do that. Let's go ahead in here and run the eye doctor and dentist. So we can run the eye doctor. And I might come in here real quick and just since only one of his eyes is really showing, just tap on that catch light and sharpen up both eyes. Get those lashes in there too. And that's pretty much about all I would do for this image. I'm liking it a lot. If I wanted to, I guess the only other thing maybe is the skin right here. I'm thinking we could probably get away with using magic skin, probably magic powder at a very low intensity. So I'm just gonna run that really fast. And then I'm going to decrease the opacity so that it looks super natural. So while, um, while this is running, I will finish talking to you. Um, that's pretty much all I would do. So as soon as this is done running, I will show it to you. This particular action definitely is more memory intensive. Um, does take a minute or so to run. Or at least a few seconds anyway. And it's done running. So now we're going to just adjust the opacity to taste. It actually looks pretty good, but I could come in here and just decrease the opacity a little bit. And now for our before and after, there's our before and there's our after. Hopefully this was helpful to you to see how I use my actions and use things into my workflow. And if it is, I will be doing some more of these um, working on my images. Thank you. This is Jody from MCP Actions. Hope to see you on my blog. Thank you.